we end up finding ways to lose things. But I, I thought Sunday, I didn't say this yesterday in the press, that, and this probably going to cost me quite a bit of money. That was the worst officiated football game in the history of the world. Not the second worst officiated. That's the worst officiated game where we even got called one time for tackling too hard. I didn't even know that you could tackle too hard. I thought that you allowed to really hit a guy. That uh, you think Kenny Anderson is one of the very best quarterbacks in football, and yesterday the Bucks defense had to contend with uh, Mr. Anderson when he had a particularly hot hand. Uh, well, were he's... you satisfied with your defense? No, uh, basically uh, we didn't get to Kenny. Uh, he is the best. He is the most accurate passer there is in football. If you give him his time, we gave him time enough to eat a sandwich, then have a salad and a pie a la mode before we got to him. Put it inside and high. And uh, I got the usual uh, comments coming off the sideline. The people are really getting better. <laughs> My <laughs> Lord. They, you'd have thought I threw that thing. John, before we get uh, on to uh, Dave Revis and a story about Dave that took place a couple of months ago, there was a story in the Green Bay newspaper yesterday morning about Doug Williams. Do you think that kind of stuff affects the Bucks as a team? Well, I'm sure that whole episode has affected this football team. Uh, uh, this bothers me quite a bit that it should affect you. Uh, uh, Doug was a fine player for us. He is no longer here. Uh, O.J. Simpson was a great player for me at Southern California. Unfortunately, he had to graduate, and we had to continue playing. And I liken it to that. Doug was a fine player here. He has gone. Uh, he's decided what he wanted to do. Now, if that means that we have to quietly fold our tent, uh, then we are a very bad football team and some people are stealing money because there are a lot of players on our football team making a, quite a bit of money and if the only reason they played is because Doug Williams is here uh, they forget that we lost many games when Doug Williams was here although he was our catalyst and he could bring us back at times uh, but every place we go now we we read the paper of the Doug, Doug Williams saga 20 for 30 and a couple of you know critical interceptions but does well, he continue to improve I think Jackie's improving it's it's tough to come in you know he, this is his eight coaching staff and he's eight years of playing football which is unusual uh, he got a lot of coaches under him fired <laughs> 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 hadn't even thought about that but any now we sent this team in to tell them that that's what they were going to do and to watch for it and we watched it not a great team in the league, but they're a good team in the league. There's Giles wide open down the middle, they threw it short. And there I go with my police guard, people shooting at me, yelling at me. Okay, we've got one of the uh, Spartan cheerleaders, Amy Coleman. Amy, your question for the coach. Hi, Coach McKay. Um, we have a very important game this week against Gibbs. We'd like to know how you would suggest we mentally and physically pre prepare for this game. Amy, I would say at this point in time, in this area of the country, I would be the last person you should ask. <laughs> but uh, I've always thought, and I tell our team even today, is that the, the primary thing of playing football is to have a lot of fun. Holly, your question. Hi. A lot of people are wondering, was there any strategy with throwing short passes yesterday instead of long passes? Well, the strategy, I think, uh, was uh, that if he waited any longer, he might have got killed. And here's your host, Randy Scott. Hello and welcome again to the Coach John McKay Show this Monday night in cold Cleveland on Sunday. The Bucks were shut out by the Browns 20 to nothing. And John, the Bucks had several opportunities during the game, but just couldn't get that goose egg off the scoreboard. The Bucks shut out the Bucks, which is one of our big things. We played a very poor, unenthusiastic football game, with the exception of a few individuals. Uh, we all wore gloves and stood around like we had uh, ski shoes on. It wasn't that really cold. It, uh, the temperature was low, but the wind was uh, light. If it had to been a high wind, it would have really been cold, but it wasn't that cold to play football. If you can't play in that kind of weather, you, uh, you got to take up volleyball and go to the beach. Over this uh, 1983 season, at this point, wh who would you say your most valuable player 
uh, was for the Bucks? Well, you'd, I think you'd have to put it in two categories, uh, defense and offense. I've never liked that most valuable player on a team because there, even though there's only one team, there really are two teams. I would say defensively, uh, Hugh Green was our most valuable player. And I would also say this, that some other defensive players played extremely well. At times, we did not play as a team well on defense. Offensively, until uh, he went down, uh, heads and shoulders was uh, James Wilder. And uh, I think some of the other offensive players had good seasons. As I think Melvin just said there, I think, uh, or, or Gerald said about Thompson, I think Jack came on to prove what he can do. I understand that Ramil said he was worth a number one draft choice yesterday on television. Uh, but I would say Green on defense and James Wilder on offense, even though James missed six, seven, eight games. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you. Merry and Christmas to you, Randy, and all of our fans out there. <laughs> we'll see you uh, next year on the Coach John McKay Show. Thanks for joining us. Season's over and the damage is done. Let's take a look back and have some fun. Dallas, Texas, remember that city? Bad officials, oh, what a pity. Thompson to Giles and the Bucks look right, but Newsom got going with a pass from White. Then came St. Louis and the Bucks can't win. The kicking game missed again. Hugh Green on his way to a real good year. He's hurting bad, but he shows no fear. Leroy, too, has a pretty good year. Watch him catch the snake right here. And Beasley Reese joins up with the boys, intercepting passes, oh, what a joy. Yeah, that man's good. Got it. James Wilder came alive in the Viking Dome. He gets a good block and he runs for home. Then Selma makes another Viking fumble. Logan grabs it for the winning rumble. Tom's in the house for a late season hook. Jack finished strong, let's take a look. Miss kicks with the shoe, miss kicks without. Yarner left foots it with the lineman's clout. I don't believe this. Yeah, right through there. Thanks to the listeners and viewers each time. 16 games and 100 lines. We appreciate it. Bye for now. Merry Christmas, y'all. Happy New Year. Ho, ho, ho. See ya. Football.